Mikhail Landa attacks six times. Remco Avenepol launches a thermonuclear attack. Already got one out of the way. This is Liège, fast on Liège 2022. There's the Cote de la Redoute and Rochelle Faucon climbs. Nothing else really matters. Previous winners are Tadej Pogacar in a small group sprint as well as Roglic the year before. Here we have Mike Woods and Jakob Fulsang who won in 2019. Danny Martinez has been great for Ineos. Bahrain victorious had the strongest overall team with Poles, Morich, Haig, and Flesh winner Dylan Turns. There's also, of course, Wout, but no Primoz Roglic or Tish Benoit, Alaphilippe Remco, and La Ultima Bala, the big contenders for this race, which kicked off in Liège and... Big break went non-threatening, and usually this race is a bit of a snoozer until Lara Dutton. Some editions even after that. We had Tim de Klerk back pacing on the front full quick step alpha vinyl. He was helped though by Movistar, by Rosen, by Bahrain, and Ida showing for Borahans Grad. But unfortunately, before Redut, there was a huge crash in a fast downhill when riders seemed to go into the curb, and it was Julian Alaphilippe. You see this rider here walking down the verge. That's Roman Bardet on DSM, who was looked fine himself, walked down because Alaphilippe was sort of upside down and had really hurt himself. Early reports from Quickstep are that Alaphilippe is stable, was conscious, but has a broken scapula and some broken ribs as well. This meant that the breakaway, though, got a bit more leash because Bahrain weren't chasing full at that point. Haig needed to change bikes, but that changed before Redoot, and I'm going to play them all. Mikel Lander attacked, I think, about six times. They were trying to open up the race, make Coos chase in particular, Movistar Lascano, EF were having to chase his Caruso, then Lander again. But all it really did was tire out the other domestiques, like Thomas when Lander goes again, like Israel's domestiques. It didn't really put any other favorites under pressure. They get to Redoute, and Quickstep still were able to put Remco Avenepol, who you just see behind Haig, in good position with Louis Vavica, Pidcock there, Kwiatkowski. Bruno Armorail, the last remnant, or that went clear from the breakaway, whilst Maori van Sevenot did a wonderful job for Avenepol. Paulus and Martinez sharing his wheels, Kosnich right to the right hand side, Wout a bit further back, Movistar Valverde quite a bit back, as well as Woods, and Bahrain a bit blocked off. Dylan turns behind the Alps and Phoenix rider. So it seemed like no one really expected Remco to launch it because the pace wasn't furious from Maori. Maybe the directors didn't watch Bass Country the other week because just at the top of Redoute, bang! Remco Avenapol sends it as changing gears, bucks the bike. He Palace is the only one that can respond. Kozner has got a good sprint. He's already losing Palace wheel. Danny Martinez is nowhere to be seen. He was, should have been close there. Maybe he was getting a bid on it. Was through a feed zone and Avenapol has a gap already. Looking behind and you see he's got 10 meters on Dylan Turns and it only takes, at this speed, they're off the steep section. It only takes someone losing the wheel for him to go clear. And there's a downhill after this. He's got Paulus off the wheel, styling it for the camera. And it's Fulsang responding. Then Haig responding for Bahrain Victorious. I can't see Martinez in that shot, despite being at the top of Redoute. So he seemed to be caught off guard or got dropped by the acceleration. And Bahrain with that many riders, they should have had someone on Remco's wheel or marking Evan Apoll. It probably should have been pulls or turns. And now they're having to chase Avon Apoll on his terrain, quote Steve Irwin, and you've got Full Sang looking back. Who else is going to chase? And this is where Avon Apoll builds out very, very quickly an advantage. Paul's looking, and it's Lander. I showed all those Lander attacks for a reason. He was strong today, but it's a one on one time trial between Remco Avon Apoll in the most ridiculous aero position on his road bike against Lander, who's attacked six times. Movistar would help a bit later, but he builds out. 24 seconds, 30 seconds, and it's going to grow even bigger when he gets past the rest of the breakaway. Only Armour Rail is able to hold his wheel when he catches up to him. It's 33 seconds, but the rolling section between Redoute and Rochefoucauld suits Avenapol perfectly. He joins up with Armour Rail, who was barely keeping his wheel on the flat, although the French run has been very, very strong this year. And only when they start sending forward the big rulers like Morich, like Thomas, and like Caruso, he's got Van Seven on marking him, and everyone's running out of domestiques 
very, very quickly before we hit the base of Rochefort-Corps with about 16 k's to go in this race. And the descents are sweeping and fast for Avonapol mostly as well. 38 seconds when he gets the base of Rochefort-Corps, he promptly drops Army Rail without even looking behind. And it's Paul's leading out with Full Saint, Wout Van Aert's third wheel, and they didn't do a quick Rochefort-Corps today. I don't know if it was the headwind, but the gap actually went up at the first 500 meters of this climb, up to 42 seconds before Mars actually started increasing the pace with Haig on his wheel, riding for Dylan Turns' fourth wheel, Martinez without any teammates at this point. But yeah, that was a big gap. And by the time they actually started putting some work into Avonapol, he was already on the descent. There's another little rolling section before they get to the descent proper called the Boncel climb. It's not that steep. And he took more time back on the descent into this. There was no major attack on Roche or Faucon this year. It was Woods on Boncel, then Vlasov countering him, who's been very good in punchy races this year, then turns again. Turns incredibly strong in this race. Only Martinez able to respond. Wout Van Aert and Fulsang dropped at this point. But the gap was too big. Even a pole with 20 seconds with no real climbs left with 10 k's to go. Whilst behind, Dylan Turns is re-attacked and only Igita and Martinez could go with him. And it's actually mass chasing for Alejandro Valverde. Vlasov, here she woods in his group. But this is what always happens. 10 seconds goes to 25. Bora have two riders in the group. They don't just want to pull everyone to the line. Martinez is asking Mars to close down Vlasov. Wout Van Aert comes back. No one else will want to pull with Wout Van Aert. Palace on his wheel. And Remco Avenapol is gone. 31 seconds with 7 Ks. 33 with 3 Ks to Vlasov. But 50 to the Van Aert Valverde group. He's already celebrating with 2.7 Ks to go. Yes, he got a little bit of drafting help from the motos at a pivotal time on top of Redoute. And he points to his head to say it was an incredibly smart performance. But you need the legs that Avonapol had and the position on the bike to pull this off. 47 Ks an hour into a headwind. The youngest winner of a monument in 50 plus years. I'm objective on this channel. No favorite riders, but Remco Evenepoel takes his first monument win ahead of Quinton Hermans. Second, who I, I didn't see for the entire race. Beat Wout Van Aert in the sprint. Does this save Quick Steps Classic season? Eh, not really. Not great on the cobbles, but certainly a massive win for those sponsors. For Avonapol, for Lefebvre. Avonapol, the big future of that team. Winning ahead of Hermans, Van Aert, Martinez, Igita, Turns, Valverde, Paulus, he or she, Woods, rounding out the top 10. Here is what Avonapol had to say after the race. I've been suffering mentally and physically a lot the, the last ha year and a half and uh, finally this year I feel that uh, everything is going well, that everything is going, uh, is getting stable and I'm, I'm getting to the best Remco again and I think today I've been showing the best Remco since, uh, since turning pro so uh, I'm really proud and happy to, to win this race.